Hello, my name is Daniel LaPlante, and I'll be demonstrating the value engineering study functionality in Text.Connect. Connect. My name is Jane Lundquist. I'm a transportation engineer in the design division. I manage Text.Connect's statewide value engineering program. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here, Jane. We really appreciate your help. During today's demo, we're going to be walking through a few things. First, the value engineering page and then the new value engineering recommendation form, which is really intended to replace form 2502. So with that said, Jane, what I'd like to do is start our demo first here in our example project, which we already have open. Now we're here on our value engineering page. You see it's broken up into multiple sections. And here the first section is dedicated to the actual value engineering details themselves, where we'll be able to answer a series of questions. First, is the value engineering study required? Has a value engineering study been conducted? We also see here that there's some basic text.connect calendar functionality that allows us to enter the study and start dates. I know that typically those studies tend to be between about four or five days, so we'll make that work here accordingly. And then at a later point, we'll be able to answer here whether the approved value engineering recommendation will be included in the final plans. The next sections we see here are dedicated to the value engineering associations and environmental associations. The environmental associations are actually going to be carried directly over automatically from ECOS. Above, we see the value engineering associations section. And that's where we're going to be able to indicate all of the other projects that are included with this, this particular project on the value engineering study. When we create these associations, what we have to keep in mind is that we are doing that from the main project. That is designating this particular CSJ as the main project. We go to the upper right hand corner of the table and we click add value engineering project. What you see here is a line appears and then what we're going to do is enter the actual CSJ of the project we want to associate by clicking here in the field. Once you've entered the actual CSJ into the field, you can click off and you see that text.connect will automatically populate with the remaining information about that project, the ID, the district, and the highway. If you want to remove that project from the table, you can by simply clicking remove. Now, Jane, since we filled out this page, can you tell me how you think this page is going to be able to provide some benefit to users in the future? This provides a table of all of the, the projects, all the CSJs that were evaluated in one VE study. This helps with transparency. We have federal partners who want to know if a value engineering study was done on a project. This will be a good place to find the information that we need for a project in the future. Exactly, and that's part of the purpose of this page, right? This information included here, this is actually going to carry over onto the value engineering study form. Well, first, we want to make sure that any information that we've entered is saved in text.connect. So we click Save Project. And once successfully updated, we're going to use our left navigation menu to scroll down to the Workflow Forms and Documents page. Remember, the only project from which we will be able to submit this actual form is from the main project. Now this form is going to begin with a header and much of that information as you can see actually populates automatically over from the project. But we're still going to need to enter the certified value specialist firm and the facilitator's name. Something else that you're going to see is those value engineering associations that we made on that value engineering page will also automatically carry over and display project IDs and CSJs. Now, if we look at the value engineering recommendations section, after the study is performed, that's where the recommendations are going to be documented. And what you'll see here is it actually contains two tabs in the table, one for approval one and the other for approval two. So let's talk about the functionality here for approval one. First, the consultant enters the recommendation costs and under the next field, they'll enter the actual descriptions of the recommendations. Now at this point, the consultant's work is done. They'll have the ability to both save and ultimately submit that form. So once that form is actually submitted, who does it go to? Let's take a look at the workflow. First, we see here that the professional engineer consultant, like we said, will fill out the cost and the description of the recommendations. Then it goes on. That's gonna go first to the district design engineer. 
Their security role is known as the Design Manager District in Text.Connect. And they're going to indicate in their review whether they recommend it moves forward, yes or no. If they approve it moving forward, it will then go to the TPND director to review it. And if they approve, that will move on to the district engineer. Now that would complete the first approval. But as we see, there's actually a second tab dedicated to approval too. Now, this is not actually going to occur or come into play until each individual project is ready to let. We see that that first round of approvals for recommendations is already visible in the first few columns. And then we see here the recommendations included in the final plans column, which will only even be enabled once that first approval has been submitted and processed. At that point, the design manager district or district design engineer can add projects by clicking the plus or add projects link and then indicate whether each recommendation has been included in their final plans. Again, by selecting yes, the drop down and then submitting that form to the TPD director and district engineer for further review and approval. The big difference here between approval two and approval one in terms of process is the reviews consider whether a recommendation should be included in the final plans on the basis of each individual project we see listed. So Jane, I put a lot out there right now. We've seen both pages and the process for both approvals. How does this recommendation form make your life easier? Well, it certainly helps me locate the information and with the possibility or with the process of notifying district personnel that the form is ready to be signed, it can begin the process with the first approval. It is also a, a way for multiple groups of projects letting out of a VE study to be processed appropriately. They don't have to hunt down an old paper copy of a the form of 2502, which may have been lost someplace and they have to start all over again. So it provides everything right up front. There's transparency. When we have new employees coming in, they're able to see the, uh, how the process works. And I feel that it's going to be a much better way of doing business. Absolutely. I, th I think it's really designed to save time and improve workflow. So I, I hope that's the result it has for you. Yes, I'm, I'm very pleased with it. I believe it'll bring transparency uh, for not only TxDOT users, but also for our federal partners in the Federal Highway Administration. They also have questions about our projects if they've had VE studies. This way they can go in and they can check for themselves and see how, how far along the, the project is in its uh, documentation. Oh, well, we're excited because it's exactly what we want TxDOT Connect to deliver. Uh, well, thank you, Jane, again for your help. And that's going to conclude our demonstration today for the value engineering study and new functionality in Tech Stock Connect. Thank you.